Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment from our webinar series straight from the horse's mouth. Stakeholders increasingly expect more information about your business's sustainability. Sustainability certification can provide these details. We helped Australian manufacturer ProLine Steel achieve Steel Sustainability Australia certification. We also worked with the Australian Steel Institute to develop the SSA program. Bill Eunice, General Manager at ProLine Steel, will explain the work we did and how it helped ProLine improve its sustainability program, market its products and strengthen supplier relationships. Bill joins Tori, our Sydney-based sustainability and systems specialist. Tori explains how we developed the SSA program and how programs like this improve sustainability of whole industries. Here's a sneak preview. So the Steel Sustainability Australia, or SSA program, has been developed by the Australian Steel Institute to support the responsible manufacturing of steel and steel products in Australia by providing a holistic best practice standard to assess sustainability performance in the manufacturing, fabrication and processing of steel across the value chain. Industry associations are pragmatic. Um, they can provide bespoke tools for their industry to assist them in improving in a way that suits them. And that's something that the SSA has done. Um, they've developed a lot of supporting documentation and a lot of supporting tools to support their certification process. Yeah, being certified opens up opportunities in the market for businesses to service clients who have an overarching uh, Green Star compliance requirements on their projects. A lot of the measures, you know, you, you're inadvertently doing, you know, successful business generally has these measures in place and that's how they sustain, you know, sustain themselves mm -hmm. within the market. So, you know, whereas before it would have been, you know, organised chaos, so to speak, this has, you know, created, you know, a bit more of a framework for us to be able to implement. And as I mentioned, easy to delegate, you know, which mm -hmm. which is which is important, especially within a family business. You know, everybody tends to want to take on everything themselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it gives it gives you opportunities to then, you know, focus on other other things. So, yeah, it, it's been very very easy to implement. You know, within within the landscape of, of business, it's very fast moving with a lot of different, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of different challenges. So, you know, being able to, you know, engage and lean heavily on things that to assist us through that process, you know, made made for made for an easy, easy, you know, process all in all. With that, let's get started. Okay, hello, and a very warm welcome back to our webinar series. So my name is Tori Wouters. I'm a sustainability and systems specialist here at ThinkStep ANZ, and I'll be your host for the next half an hour. Um, today, I'm very pleased to welcome Bill Yunus as the general manager of ProLine Steel. Um, it's great to have all of you here today. So some of you may not be super familiar with us. So a quick, as a quick ThinkStep ANZ intro, um, we're very passionate about helping organizations to succeed sustainably. We help with strategic sustainability projects, detailed studies like life cycle assessments, carbon footprinting, and designing circular economy systems. Um, and we've been doing this across um, Australia and New Zealand for about the past 16 years. So as I said before, I built a our guest today is Bill Yunus. Bill is the general manager of ProLine Steel. They're a steel fabricator based in Padstow, New South Wales. ProLine was founded by the managing director, um, Eddie Yunus, back in 1989. We'll be hearing from Bill shortly, but first I just wanted to introduce you quickly to the Steel Sustainability Australia program. So the Steel Sustainability Australia, or SSA program, has been developed by the Australian Steel Institute to support the responsible manufacturing of steel and steel products in Australia by providing a holistic best practice standard to assess sustainability performance in the manufacturing, fabrication and processing of steel across the value chain. The SSA program supersedes the previous Environmental Sustainability Charter, or ESC, and has been developed to align with the Green Building Council of Australia's Responsible Products Framework requirements. This means that businesses that have achieved SSA certification can help Green Star projects in achieving um, Green Star points for their submissions. So there are three levels to SSA certification, and we'll just talk, them, talk through them quickly now. On the screen, you'll see a bit of a breakdown of what's required um, for each credit and for each uh, what's required for each level. So level one is the entry level of SSA certification, and it requires compliance to best practice governance, environmental and OHS management criteria. And it verifies that the steel feedstock is sourced from a responsible steel manufacturer or producer. So level one certification will not qualify a product as either good practice or best practice on its own under the responsible products framework, but it does get you four RPV points. And these can be combined with other valid certifications in, to support project teams in their Green Star submissions. 
It also satisfies the requirements for the ESC um, that is in previous Green Star tools, so like does Green Star Design and Asbuild, and there are still a lot of projects registered to these tools, so there is still a lot of value in it. Level two certification um, builds on the requirements of level one, and there are two different pathways, so level two A and level two B. These demonstrate compliance to additional environmental health and social impact assessments, and um, level two A certification it requires um, verif- a provision of a verified product specific EPD and level 2B certification is available where a verified product specific EPD cannot be provided. Level 2 certification achieves good practice recognition, so 10 RPVs or responsible product value points under the Green Star um, Responsible Products Framework and can be used to support um, in targeting or achieving various responsible credit- credits in the Green Star Buildings Rating Tool. And then you have level three. Level three is an aspirational level of certification, which assesses extended compliance requirements to achieve best practice recognition. So 15 RPVs under the Green Star um, Responsible Products Framework. And this provides even more um, support to project teams when targeting points under the Green Star Buildings rating tool and the responsible credits. So I'll hand over to Bill now. Bill's going to talk a bit about ProLine Steel and why they wanted to achieve SSA certification. Hi, everyone. Uh, Thank you, Tori. Um, my name is Bill Yunus, as Tori had mentioned, and I'm the general manager of Broline Steel Propriety Limited. Uh, we're a family business. Uh, my father started the business 35 years ago, and um, yeah, I've been working here for 20 years, and um, yeah, seen a lot of change within within the industry, and um, which brings us to you know what what we're meeting today. What this webinar is about is obviously how steel fabricators and the industry as a whole can help. Um, influence sustainability outcomes for the industry. So there's a few few notes that we've got here. Um, first page is why we got certified in the first place. So working to minimise our impacts. So businesses, irrespective of size and scale, must accept that we all withhold the responsibility for the impacts within our business and which what, what impacts they have on all facets of society. Unfortunately, regarding sustainability, it is easier to be convinced that our businesses are small and insignificant. Therefore, any measures to combat sustainable impacts were unimportant. However, measures such as the SSA program enable industry-wide changes. Therefore, we become an important part of a substantial change. Also, improving sustainability outcomes in our business. So by having an instrument such as certification, we are then provided with the metric of how we can improve. Within business, it is easy to become complacent once you have achieved your goals. However, the SSA program provides perspective as to how and where improvements can be made. Also, third-party verification that we are achieving best practice outcomes. So I'm sure this shouldn't come to a shock as a shock to our guests, but I'm, I am in no way an expert in sustainability. The SSA process enables businesses to have access to how and what we should be doing to improve our processes that the experts determine as being the right course of action. Having a third party verify our systems and processes ensures that we are walking on the right track. Also, it it supports our clients who are seeking Green Star certification. Being certified opens up opportunities in the market for businesses to service clients who have an overarching uh, Green Star compliance requirements on their projects. Generally speaking, our roles as business leaders is to provide solutions to our clients. So by demonstrating that as a business, you can assist on all facets of the project deliverables has a resounding effect on the end-to-end solution that you can provide to the market. So how certifications can help businesses. So it helped us demonstrate we're already on, we're already performing well. So speaking with my peers within the industry, most are not aware that most of the criteria within the SSA program are measures that they already have implemented or are inadvertently doing. It simply encouraged structure to support the pathway to continual sustainability targets. It also provided a pathway for continuous improvement. The framework that is required to become SSA compliant has become a useful tool across the board within our operations. Being a 35 year old business, measures that you manage at some stage need to be produced into a format, which are easy for someone in succession to follow. The process has helped us implement the process has helped implement this within our business so that it is easier for our staff to maintain and manage. Also, it ensures that we can continue to support our clients and exceed their expectations. As I said, as the sustainability landscape is evolving, we expect that the SSA program will be reflective of this. 
therefore allowing us to continually adapt in line with our clients' requirements. So we've talked a bit about the how and why of certification, but I also wanted to talk about where the role of industry associations and where industry associations actually sit in all of this. Um, So the first thing is industry associations are insightful. They understand what their members need, they understand what they don't, and they understand what works. And they can approach it in quite a in a quite a pragmatic way and understand what's really going to work best for, for their industry. Um, industry associations also enablers. So often their members are small to medium enterprises like Proline, who would not always be able to undertake this work on their own or may not even under, you know, may may need have trouble with where do we actually start with all of this. Industry associations can really work with small businesses to enable them to start achieving these amazing outcomes. Industry associations are pragmatic. Um, They can provide bespoke tools for their industry to assist them in improving in a way that suits them. And that's something that the SSA has done. Um, They've developed a lot of supporting documentation and a lot of supporting tools to support their certification process. Industry associations are also influencers. They're influential. They can really drive their industry forward holistically as part of an industry strategy and can make sure that we're achieving the best possible outcomes and that we're all working together towards a common goal. And finally, industry associations are multipliers. Um, the effort invested applies to many businesses and the impact benefits can be multiplied you know, across, an entire, across the entire industry. They can really have a huge impact and they can help us all in our own small way drive enormous amounts of change. Industry associations have a huge opportunity to drive change as a force for good. Um, We love working with them and we love working with companies like Proline Steel and really supporting them um, and seeing them become key players um, in the sustainability space. And we really see industry associations as being a a major player um, in how we can take industry forward together. So I think it's really, really important um, as much as possible that we can all start to to get together and and work towards this common goal. What we thought we'd do now is just open up the room for for questions. um, And we also can have a bit of a discussion with Bill around sort of the process that we took to to get there and to, to go through this process. And I actually have a question for you, Bill. And that was, so through this process, there was a lot of good work that you were already doing as a company that really all we needed to do was just sit down and figure out the best way to document it, putting processes in place or starting to, to measure and you know report on on all the good things you were already doing. Um, now that it's been in place for you know a few months, have you found difficulties in maintaining that and, and, and keeping to those sorts of processes and keeping to the to you know the measuring that we're doing or have you found that it's been relatively easy to implement or have you have you taken any learnings from that oh no it's been it's been very easy to implement in fact and as i as i'd mentioned earlier um a lot of the measures you know you you're inadvertently doing you know successful business generally has these measures in place and that's how they sustain you know sustain themselves mm-hmm. within the market so you know whereas before it would have been you know organized chaos so to speak this has you know created you know a bit more of a framework for us to be able to implement and as i mentioned easy to delegate you know which which is which is important especially within a family business you know everybody tends to want to take on everything themselves mm-hmm. so you know it gives it gives you opportunities to then you know focus on other other things so yeah it, it's been very very easy to implement have you found any interest in um, other members of your team around sort of sustainability or the work that you're doing? Has it opened up any conversations at all or is it is it more just having those practices in place for you guys at more of a management level? So so within our industry, um, you know, you have you have a lot of old CODs who, you know, don't like change. So initially, you know, the feedback is why do we have to do more work? Mm-hmm. So but I, I, I know as time progresses, you know, the boys will see um you know the influence that this has and the importance that this has within our business to be frank Mm. and we just have uh one more question from you which was what surprised you most about the process did you find it you know what were the biggest challenges that you found not not, nothing really to be honest i mean i think i think as we sort of progress because we went for level one a level one certification i suppose that to be the entry level you know it's it's going to be as as favorable towards you know seeking certification so I, i dare say that it wasn't too difficult for us i mean you know think step obviously helped us tremendously and um you know made it as simple as possible for us which you know within within the landscape of of business it's very fast moving with a lot of different Mm -hmm. you know a lot of different challenges so you know being able to you know engage and lean heavily on think step to assist us through that process you know made made for made for an easy easy you know process all in all 
I mean, it made it easy for us too, because it was a very well set up business. So there wasn't a huge amount that we had to do, I have to say. Um, so we've had a question around how SSA aligns with Greenstar and sort of why it was developed this way. And I think that's a really good question, a really important one. So for a bit of background, um, the GBCA started a process about five years ago, I would say, of reinventing and reinvigorating all of their rating tools. And the first rating tool that they, they that started off this process was Greenstar Buildings, which is the newest iteration of the previous Greenstar design and as-built rating tools. And as part of the um, development of Greenstar Buildings, there was this real appetite to from the GBCA to really look at how products were considered in this space, products and materials, and to do a lot of work around that. So um, the GBCA and, you know, full disclosure, I was there at the time, so I worked on this and one of my colleagues, Nicole Sullivan, also did. So we were quite heavily involved in the responsible products framework. But through the process of developing Green Star Buildings and looking at products, um, we started to develop this thing, which is now called the Responsible Products Framework, which is due for release, I believe, later this month, um, in, in its full. But what this was is basically a, a really structured framework for looking at what are the elements of a product or what are the, going to be the important environmental, social and governance um, elements that need to be considered for products going into these sorts of responsible or, or you know, green star rated buildings. So when SSA came around to looking at update their standard, one of the there was a big appetite to really align this with the responsible products framework. One because it provides a really good structure, um, and also because the GBCA and other rating tools often provide a quite a good sort of lamppost for where industry is going to be headed and the sorts of questions that are going to be asked by by project teams and by you know by a lot of your clients um, in the future when they're working on these green star buildings. So the SSA has been developed to very closely align with the credits that were in the Responsible Products Framework at the time and to try and ensure that when you're achieving these good practice or best practice, so level two or level three outcomes under the SSA standard, that that then translates pretty directly into good practice or best practice under the framework. Um, we can put a link into the website or we can maybe send one out after to the um, website of the um, GBCA and the Responsible Products Framework, which will provide, you know, a bit of an idea of where the SSA sits. But it is just about making everything as consistent and as easy in industry as possible. So, you know, one of the the challenges that you can face when you're faced with a million different standards or, or different rating tools is how do they actually all align together and how is it consistent and, you know, trying to, I suppose, make the process as easy as, as possible. So I guess one more question for you, Bill. So you've gone through level one certification now. Is there now an appetite to start pushing forward and, and looking at level two or, or, you know, potentially level three certification in the future? Is that something that you see as being, you know, some, a pathway you want to follow? I think I think for the moment, um, you know, we, we, we're, we're compliant with a lot of the project's requirements. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as, as time will go on, you know, we'll review what what the cost of that is doing and you know the implication it has on our business and seeing whether or not it it has if our business requires it i mean i would i would assume tori and you know correct me if i'm wrong you know a lot of a lot of the measures for sort of you know two and up level two and up is you know for businesses that are you know greater substance you know like the sort of medium to large enterprises um it's not to suggest that we don't believe that you know any impacts that we could mitigate will you know be beneficial but whether or not we see immediate um, we see immediate benefits from it will determine if, if, if we if we go down that line. Yeah, I think that's really good insight. I think that's really fair. It's doing what makes sense for your business at the time. And I think and that's, that's a, a really that's the important idea of thing. The tiers, though, isn't it? I mean, exactly right. You have different tiers of business. Um, yeah. Yep. I, I, think think our, I think our impacts are quite minimal. And um, mm. yeah, it's not to suggest that we would not going to consider it, but we, we, we definitely are thinking about it. Yep. No, I think that's a really, really good insight. So thank you so much, Bill, for your insights. Really, really appreciate it. Um, thank you all so much for attending. Thank you, Tori. Thank you.